أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعين به ونتوكل عليه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وخاتم الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين نبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أما بعد السلام عليك سيدي ومولاي يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة السلام عليك وعلى جدك وأبيك وعلى أمك وأخيك وعلى التسعة المعصومين من بنيك السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم وهو أحسن القائلين وأصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخرين آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم For the purification of the souls, the enlightenment of the hearts, for the hastening of the reappearance of the awaited Savior, عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف, enlighten your souls, purify your hearts with the recitation of salawat upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد My respected elders, sisters and brothers of Bayt Al-Qa'im and all the mu'mineen and mu'minat watching Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh This is one of the strongest weapons for the believers It is practiced by many human beings irrespective of religious backgrounds or denominations and indeed it's an important component of the Quran as well as faith and it brings about success of the human beings. The dua, supplications, is indeed a significant and widely practiced form of worship in the religion of Islam. It is indeed a practice that many of us are very much accustomed to in our lives. It is integral as part of the ibadah in the holy month of Ramadan, we recite dua at Fajr and at Iftar. In the pilgrimage of Al Hajj, we recite dua in every part of the rituals, whether it's during the tawaf, whether it's the sa'i between Safa and Marwa, whether it's, for example, the uh, taqsir, or whether it's the halq, whether we are in Mina or in Arafat. Dua is integral. In Salah, whether we are in ruku' or sujood or tashahud or indeed qunut, we are reciting dua. In ziyara, dua becomes something uh, very much part of the process in honoring those brilliant individuals who have come to visit and indeed respect. In fact, you and I are very much aware if we were to investigate the world of hadith literature, we'll find perhaps a dua for every aspect of our lives that is either mustahab or even just mubah, just allowed. You ask me, give me examples. For example, you look at the dua when we go to sleep or a dua when we eat or a dua when we buy something or a supplication for the first night of marriage and an invocation at the time to resolve conflict or the time of ease and suffering. That is so integral. That's actually inseparable from our lives. Dua is so, so part of our existence, our thoughts, our movements, our actions, something that we grow with from our young age and somehow do not wish to be separated from all our lives there is a place for dua 
isn't it? Just think about your last 24 hours. There must have been situations, even if you are, of course, not in Ziyarat or not in these areas that we talked about, there is a place for dua that is uh, reserved for each and every human being, irrespective of their religions. Because, of course, we as Muslims highlight the importance of supplications, but it is a quality and it's uh, a need that human beings have to call upon a, a higher being. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran establishes this fact. Can you imagine that Allah jalla wa'ala tells us that irrespective of even the creation and the type of the creation, you'll find many people resorting to speaking to their Lord, asking their Lord, supplicating and invocating Allah jalla wa'ala. In chapter 24, verse number 41, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alam tara anna Allah yusabbihu lahu man fi samawa والأرض والطير صافات كل قد علم صلاته وتسبيحه. Don't you know that there is invocation and remembrance of the Almighty Subhanahu wa Taala all throughout the heavens and the earth. The birds all are singing in this hymn of the remembrance of the Almighty Subhanahu wa Taala, and each know the way they speak to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and they invoke his glorious name. We have a, a narration that is found in Bihar al-Anwar volume 14 that Prophet Sulaiman ala nabina wa ala alihi wa alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam one day you know he was sitting in uh, uh, next to the shore and he saw something that drew his attention. He saw that there was an ant that was carrying a small seed towards the sea. And he saw then a frog emerge from the sea and take the seed and indeed go what? And uh, go down into the water. And then he was wondering what is happening? Why is this happening? And he saw this reoccurring. He saw this happening on a, a few occasions. And later, the you know he was able to speak to the ant because Allah wa ta'ala had given him the ability to communicate with animals and uh, with uh, insects as well so he said to it what has happened so according to the narration فقالت يا نبي الله إن في قعر هذا البحر جوفة وفيها دودة عمياء oh the prophet of Allah at the bottom of the sea there is a insect which is blind and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for it, uh, you know, something that will help its rizq. And the, I carry that rizq. And Allah uh, ordained that particular frog to take it from me and deliver it. So Sulaiman alayhi salam would say, have you heard this particular uh, Insect, say anything? Is there a dua? Is there something that supplicates? I said, Naam. They, this particular insect say, and listen to this. It's beautiful to highlight that every creation of Allah Jalla wa Ala, everything remembers Him, glorifies Him, beautifies uh, their existence with the dhikr of the Almighty Jalla wa Ala. Qalat Naam, Yaman, La Yansani fi Jawfi Hadihi Sagra. برزقك لا تنسى عبادك المؤمنين برحمتك um, Oh the one who does not forget me in the darkness of the sea whilst I'm at the bottom with your kindness with your mercy don't forget your servants who are believers with your mercy subhanallah even this small insect is praying for those seeking to serve the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala and to worship Him sincerely. That's why as believers we are told there is a key realization that must be grasped at the outset of every discussion concerning dua and that is portrayed in chapter 40 verse number 60. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Allah invites you and I, supplicate to me, because this is what everyone does. This is universal. You are not different. You as human being cannot 
take yourself out of this realm. Don't think that you could say, I can live my life, I don't wanna speak to God, I don't wanna communicate with him, I don't wanna ask him, I'm okay, I have everything. Allah Jalla wa'ala says, I have created you and I have placed within you the innate need to speak to me, to communicate with me, to ask me, to beg me, to beseech me. So make sure you do it, why? Allah Jalla says those who turn their back on me and practice arrogance by not supplicating to me, by not asking me, Allah will make them punished in Jahannam disgracefully, humiliated. But what is more, let's go through the Holy Quran. The subject of our discussion are du'as that change the world. These du'as are phenomenal. These du'as are the keys to success, my dear sisters and brothers. These du'as are what you and I need in our day-to-day -day lives. These du'as are given to us by Allah Jalla wa Ala, and they are present in the Holy Quran. These are truly wonderful secrets to success and to happiness. Allah wa Ta'ala says, very well. What else do we need to know about this important issue? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul ma ya'ba'u bikum rabbi lawla du'a'ukum. Allah says in the Quran, say, if you do not, you know, supplicate to Allah, if you do not speak to him, he will not care for you. The reason why he cares for you is your speaking to him. How many times you and I have been told that dua is about asking hajat. Dua is about supplicating so that we get what we want. It's our needs. I'm in trouble, I ask Allah. I need something, I ask Allah. Very well, there's no doubt about that. But here Allah wants to take us out of this particular realization to make us think a little bit, to make us introspect and reflect. It says this dua of yours is key for your survival, for your nourishment of your soul. It's actually purposeful. It's actually there for a, a bigger objective. And one of them, the Quran says, if it wasn't for this dua, Allah Taala would not care for you as much. Of course, he is Arham al rahimin He pays attention to us. He is Ar-Rahman. He is the all uh, compassionate, but this is his decree. He attends to the physical needs of all his creation, there is no doubt. But if anyone wants special care and attention, support of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala and spiritual growth, they need to turn to him in dua. Allah wa ta'ala is not saying that I will abandon you completely in the sense that you will not get basic rizq. No, Allah wa ta'ala gives every individual what they deserve as far as physical needs. But there is so much more that you and I require, isn't it? Therefore, dua is in itself a process of connection and spiritual refinement, but also one that gives you and I and all humanity the tools for survival. There are five major reasons, my dear sisters and brothers, why we have to invest in dua. We have to take it seriously. I know we do in many cases in our lives. I know we pick up these dua books and we recite. I know in the month of Ramadan, I know in certain days of the year, we are gripped with these wonderful invocations and supplications and some of this, some of it move us like Dua Ikumail or for example Dua Abu Hamza or Munajat Shabaniya. These are gems of duas, no doubt. But the investigation that I would like to go through, the analysis, is a little bit more deeper to try and unravel some of the secrets of the du'as of the Holy Qur'an specifically, and the ones that have indeed been explained by Ali Muhammad, the pure, immaculate progeny of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, as an invitation for you and I to undertake this journey. There is a reason why Allah wa Taala has presented us these particular du'as in the Holy Quran for us to reflect upon. But here is an important question as a prelude towards appreciating these du'as. Why do we need them? What's the point? We have established uh, the basics already, but let's think a little bit more. 
We as human beings have so much worries. We have and we go through a lot of hardship and difficulties, tough times, anxieties. Look at the current climate. The COVID-19 epidemic has gripped the world, doesn't it? Everywhere, it's not only in the United States, in the United Kingdom, in Europe, in many places. You know, there are a lot of people who are still suffering. There is a lot of fear, financial concerns. There are health worries. There are social challenges that many people are facing due to the rise of coronavirus. And other, by the way, issues in society that go on and on and on. There will not be a time in this existence where people will be completely free from this particular hardship until the end, the total end of time. So nobody can claim that, by the way, I don't have any issues. If these matters do actually pile up, and they do, I mean, I, uh, you know, sometimes speak to some of my sisters and brothers, marital issues, they feel suffocated, right? Uh, the husband's abusive or the wife is uh, abusive, for example. Uh, financial cha challenges where they just don't have enough to be able to provide for the family. They're going through, for example, a legal case uh, which they're really, really stressed about, for example, and they do pile up. We need to speak to someone who will listen all the time. But not only the fact that we don't need an appointment or an allocated place, but someone who has the keys someone who has the answers, someone who has the solution, someone who can help us out, my dear sisters and brothers. So, you know, sometimes we feel good to speak to our mothers or our fathers or our friends. We can find in them, we open our hearts in them. We need to uh, somehow relieve the pressure and the stress that is present in our minds and our hearts. And that's absolutely fine, by the way. We need to speak to human beings in some stages, but the absolute perfect being. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is the one who says, Inni qareeb ujibu da'wat da'i idha da'an. I am close. I answer the call of the one who actually calls me. With all his compassion, his love, he is there. He can and will change things. And no one else can. No one else has the keys other than him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first reason why I need to study dua intensively and extensively is because of my need to empty my heart from worries. Number two is that there is a place in our heart, perhaps, that is reserved for this wonderful virtue. Every human being needs it. It's called hope. When the going gets tough, we may become despondent, we may give up. Or, for example, when we sin or we turn our backs away or when we transgress, we may lose optimism and indeed hope. Shaitan may come to us and say, you know what, I, we will not be forgot, forgiven. Um, we spend years, we waste years of our lives. And somehow we come to the conclusion sometimes, what is the point? Let's just give up. But... Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Allahu Akbar. The hope, the breeze, just feel that breeze when you recite this verse and you understand what it's saying. Saying, oh those who have turned away from Allah, don't despair. Don't despair. Do not despair. How many times we've heard this message? The message of hope is powerful. The Quran is a book of hope. As a book of positivity, as a book of light, it is not one for you and I to somehow think it's over. There is no point. Dua, therefore, brings that sense of uh, key connection through positivity. It's about optimism. It plants those seeds in our hearts. It is the light at the end of the tunnel. Number three, my dear sisters and brothers. The need to study Quranic du'a and all the du'as of the Ahlul Bayt is because we have to be self-accounting. What does that mean? We cannot improve our position 
unless we self introspect. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna Allah la yughayyur ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyur ma bi anfusihim. Allah does not change the affairs of the people until they change what is within themselves. When you and I approach the Almighty Subhanahu wa Taala, and when we supplicate to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we empty the burden on our shoulders. We pledge that we will not no longer do this again. It is the process of refinement of the soul known as istighfar, where we seek to be refreshed and begin a new journey. Dua makes this possible. Dua is the journey to undertake for everybody who has, for example, turned unfortunately away from their creator, from the only beloved. It is the beautiful opportunity presented to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we do accounting once every year, like we are able to, you know, hold ourselves accountable for our finances, dua is an opportunity to do that when it comes to our souls too. And number four, uh, my dear sisters and brothers, it is also this journey of self-discovery. When you and I recite du'as, especially of the Holy Quran and the Ahl al-Bayt, it enables us to undergo a process of ma'rifa. You know, when I pick up the Holy Quran, what does it do? It, you know, and I read those du'as and I reflect on them and I memorize them and I recite them and I apply them in my life and it lives with me. It's enriched within my thoughts and my feelings and my actions. It enables me to get that edge closer towards cognizance of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Ma'rifah of the holy Ahl al-Bayt salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim aj ajma'een. Who am I? Where will I go? Where am I at the moment? Where are my weaknesses? And you know, you only need to pick up the du'as such as Dua Abu Hamza al-Thamali of Imam Zain al-Abideen As-Sajjad salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. You know what he says? He says, Sayyidi, ana alladhi adhnabt, ana alladhi qassart, ana alladhi lam astahyika fil khala' wa lam uraqibka fil mala' ana sahibu al-dawahi al-uzma, ana alladhi ala sayyidi hijtara, ana alladhi asaytu jabbar al-sama' ana, ana, I am the one who disobeyed you, I am the one who turned against you, I am the one who is not embarrassed to commit evil before you, I am, I am, I am. Refinement, purification, self-accountability, a journey of self-discovery. I am getting to know who I am because I am not going to fall into the traps of shaitan by having the self-conceit and the belief that I am okay and I am somehow above everyone else or I am not to be blamed for anything and I don't need to necessarily approve it. And the final reason, the fifth one that I have thought about, and there are so many others uh, with regards to discovering the beauties of dua is social connection, my dear sisters and brothers. Human beings are sociable beings, aren't we? We need to be with each other. We need to communicate with each other. Dua is a school of tarbiyah. It is a station of refinement and correct education on social responsibility. Look at Sayyidat al-Nisa, the Lady of Light, Fatima al-Zahra, salawatullahi wa salamu alayha. When she supplicates, she thinking about others before herself. When she prays for her neighbors before she prays for herself. Ya bunay al-jar thumma al-dar. Oh my son, we think of others before we think of ourselves. It is also the, 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 the supplications that exists out there. How did they change the world? They are not individualistic. We do not believe in monasticism. We do not believe in isolating ourselves from the rest of society and somehow supplicating. Du'as make social change. Du'as are there for to bring about social justice. Yes, they are motivational. They are inspirational. They give us the strength and the energy to rise against zulm and oppression. In du'a, for example, uh, iftitah, alhamdulillahi, qasim al-jabbareen, mubir al-zalimeen, mudrik al-harabeen, nakal al-zalimeen, sariq al-mustasrikheen, mawdi hajat al-talibeen, mu'tamad al-mu'mineen. When we supplicate to Allah and we say, alhamdulillah, the one who breaks the back of these tyrants, 
the one who supports the oppressed. Allah is with us. And when we read the supplications of these prophets of God in the Holy Quran, when we read how they had incredible courage because of the way that they spoke to Allah wa ta'ala, that they would rise against these oppressors. Look at, for example, Musa alayhi salam. You know, Musa ala nabina wa ala alihi afdara salatu was uh, tasked with a tremendously stressful responsibility. Do you agree? For example, he was told to go to Fir'aun, who had said that Ana Rabbukum al A'la, I am your supreme Lord. Now imagine if you're given this task. You are to go and to speak to this individual who thinks he's his Lord and he has tortured and killed thousands. He is in control of vast lands and he believes he is the all powerful. You go to him and you say, No, you're wrong. You're not. You're just a human being. What a colossal task. But Musa السلام, wanted one thing. He supplicated. In Surah Taha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Idhab ila Fir'aun innahu tagha. Go to Fir'aun. He has transgressed. Qala rabbi shrah li sadri. Wa yassir li amri. Wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Subhanallah, Musa alayhi salam conquers the whole supplication discussion, isn't it? Like all the prophets, you study the Quran and it's full of these wonderful conversations that they have with their only beloved, with their creator, well, Allah jalla wa ala. It's amazing the strength that they get, the energy that they get, the positivity that fills their hearts. Musa doesn't ask for a nuclear bomb. Musa doesn't ask for some, you know, incredible uh, uh, weapon out there. He asks for something else. He starts with dua. قَالَ رَبِّ الشَّرْحَ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحَلُّ الْعُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي These are one of the duas of the Quran that are truly wonderful in the words of these great prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why my dear sisters and brothers, the Ahlul Bayt, Salawatullahi wa Salamu alayhim ajma'in, they love dua. Isn't it how beautiful that we in the school of Ahlul Bayt pride ourselves with this association with supplications because the Ali Muhammad would want us to appreciate and understand the importance of this tool that the uh, uh, Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to us. That's why Imam al-Baqir sallallahu wa sallamu alayhi has uh, narrated to have said, كان علي رجل دعاء علي ibn Abi Talib was a man who used to supplicate a lot. He used to invoke Allah tabarak wa ta'ala a lot and used to remember the Almighty jalla wa ala in many occasions. That's why in a narration, it is said that one of the Ma'asumin, peace and blessings be upon them, said, Man thalatha, lam yuhram thalatha. Listen to this beautiful narration. Anyone who's given three things will not be deprived of three things. Man du'a, ijaba. Anyone who's given uh, du'a or the opportunity to supplicate will be given the response. Subhanallah. We don't see it. Many times we complain, why is my dua not being answered? We'll ask, we'll discuss this in a moment. But the narration continues and says, Man a shukr a ziyada. Whomsoever has a tawfiq to be grateful to Allah, to express gratitude and thankfulness, they will be given more. La'in shakartum la'zidannakum, the Quran says. Man a tawakkul al kifaya. Whomsoever has the light of reliance and dependence and trust of Allah wa will be looked after, will not be abandoned. So the question that has to start off this discussion regarding du'as that change the world, du'as of the Holy Quran is what is du'a exactly? Have we understood it properly? Have we appreciated it correctly? Is it just to ask? Because in Arabic, to ask means su'al. But the word is du'a. The narration, uh, Hadith Qudsi says, إِذَا دَعَانِي أَجِبْتَهُ وَإِنْ سَأَلَنِي أَعْطَيْتَهُ If the person calls me, I will respond to them. If they ask me, 
I will give them. So, su'al is different to du'a. So, a du'a is a call to a higher being. And it has three purposes. Number one, it is when an individual asks the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala for something. And number two, it's when they speak to him. How we are desperate to speak to him. And number three, it's just when they remember him. All have their merits. All are very, very important. And incidentally, beautifully, the Quran says, yes, there is no acts of uh, obligation in the uh, paradise uh, realm. There is no necessarily salah and wajibat for people to necessarily reflect upon uh, and perform in that existence. But in chapter 10, verse number 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, you know, says da'wahum fiha subhanakallahum that their supplication is subhanakallahum they will still need to supplicate because you see in Jannah it's not wajib but you feel the need to because it's so beautiful you get the pleasure of doing it it's a pleasurable experience we don't necessarily go through it in this world the body is very limiting materialism and everything else but it is actually in reality quite a uh, serene spiritually uplifting experience and we will see that inshallah ta'ala in jannah may allah ta'ala make you all of the people of paradise that is why imam zayn al-abideen al-sajjad salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi the man whom we are honoring in these uh, nights in remembrance and the morning of his shahada anniversary. In the dua of Abu Hamza, he famously says, وَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ كُلِّ لَذَّةٍ بِغَيْرِ ذِكْرِكَ And I ask, Ya Allah, your refuge from any pleasurable experience in this world that is not accompanied with your remembrance. It needs to be. Because in Jannah it will be. And so how amazing that I prepare myself for that land, for that place, by ensuring that every pleasure that I go through and every enjoyment and every happiness is coupled with the supplication and the remembrance and the invoking of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why, my dear sisters and brothers, when Allah wa ta'ala doesn't give or grant after dua or asking, it's because he gives at other times. And it's actually maybe uh, the dua is for another purpose. He knows what is good for us. So I ask and I ask and I ask and I don't get. But Allah knows I need to keep asking because I need my heart to be cleansed. But I don't see that. I think, Ya Allah, why are you not giving me? But there's a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually not giving. And that is because I need the flushing of my soul. So let us not be judgmental towards the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala if we see that our dua is not being answered. Notice this interesting hadith from Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Inna al-abd al-wali lillah yad'u Allah azza wa jal fil amri فيقول الملك الموكل به اقض حاجته. So a person who is a friend of God asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on something and the angel responsible Allah will say to him fulfill their needs. ولا تعجلها فإني أشتهي أن أسمع نداءه وصوته. He says you know Don't delay it because I really love to hear his voice and his supplication. He, the one who is an enemy of Allah, he, um, you know, uh, supplicates. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, answer him uh, to the angel, answer him quickly because I don't like to hear his, uh, you know, uh, dua. So the idea is sometimes Allah wa ta'ala loves to hear us and if we're not getting our dua answered it's because there is another 
reason. That means we need to have full of hope. Never think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgotten you. Look at Zakaria alayhi salam, 90 years old, dua after dua. In chapter 19, verse number four, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبًا وَلَمْ أَكُمْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيًّا this great dua Zakaria recites, he's teaching you and I, never give up when it comes to dua. Never think it's over. Never think there is no hope anymore. Because Zakaria السلام, was 90 years of age and still he was a man who was dedicated to supplications. And he would say, Ya Allah, look at my hair. It's turned white, but I will never stop the supplications and the duas. I will always continue. So, given the importance, it is therefore not a surprise that the Holy Quran focuses on du'as in numerous places, but especially in the words of these great prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for mankind for guidance and indeed salvation. They are our true teachers and role models. They are exemplary and indeed sinless. Hence, they know how to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah jalla wa ala has preserved their communication and their supplication and what they did in facing so many of these challenges. You study the likes of Nuh, you study the story of Isa, Musa, Zakaria, Ya'qub, Ibrahim, and of course our beloved Prophet Rasul al-A'zam wa Nabi al-Akram, Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And you'll come with the conclusion that du'as played an integral part in the lives of these prophets. They did not turn to Allah only at the time of need. They did not supplicate to Allah only when they were in trouble. They would supplicate to Allah all the time. It was part of their habits. It was part of their normal day-to-day -day routine. It was something that they enjoyed. They realized that dua makes them who they are. They realized that communication with Allah makes them more powerful, more inspirational, more captivating, more influential when they speak to others. When they try to relay the message to others. That is why these du'as are not only specific for the time of these prophets. These du'as are for you and I to pick up and to appreciate and understand. And they have a range of purposes, political, social, spiritual, economic, theological, and so on. How beautiful it is, my dear sisters and brothers, that when we look at the Holy Quran, we begin to memorize some of these du'as. We begin to really put them to memory and recite them in our qunut, recite them in our day-to-day -day supplications and invocations and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tabarakahu wa ta'ala, my dear sisters and brothers, has given us the prescription. This prescription is in the Quran and in the words of Ali Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam alayhim ajma'in. I feel sometimes that the du'as of the Quran are somehow neglected. We don't really look at them as much. We have memorized Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar. But if someone was today to ask you, how many du'as are there in the Holy Quran? How many can you recite? How many can you explain? What do they actually mean? What does this Rabbana atina actually mean anyway? When we're asking Allah, what does it refer to? These are important questions. And perhaps you've never had the opportunity to study Quranic du'as. This is an introductory element towards them. There is so much to say about them. Inshallah, over the next three nights following this, we will be looking at sample of these du'as. We will be seeking to somehow analyze how did these prophets use these du'as to make the change, the positive transformation in society. I would like you to go this, through this journey with me to, to, to realize one thing. And that is dua is not a individual process. It is one that causes so much things to become better. It is, my dear sisters and brothers, truly universal in many aspects, multidimensional in many different ways. And I would like to look at some examples by understanding uh, and referencing the background behind this dua 
perhaps how it was recited by the Prophet concerned and what does it mean to you and I today and what, what lessons can be drawn into our lives. But each and every dua that I inshallah ta'ala would discuss, I would like to invite my sisters and brothers, those watching. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant tawfiq to all those mu'mineen and mu'minat who have established these majalis. It's not easy to necessarily keep the momentum during the month of Muharram and Safar with these majalis of Ali Muhammad online because yes attending also establishing them is not easy too but to ensure that everything runs smoothly for the benefit of the community there is definitely wisdom in what is happening to you and I uh, around the world but we can still learn we can still be inspired by the Holy Quran and that's why when we come to Karbala when we come to the eternal legacy of Sayyid Shuhada Aba Abdullah al Hussein Salawatullahi wa Salamu Alayhi, his family and his companions, dua played a very key role. Because, you know, the head of this university of Karbala was a master in dua. Imam al Hussein al Shaheed Salawatullahi wa Salamu Alayhi has a mesmerizing dua known as Dua Arafah. Most of us read it only on the day of Arafah. But maybe there are some lines that we need to keep remembering and reciting and referring to from time to time when we feel low, when we feel the need to speak to our Lord, which of course comes in many ways, comes in many different shapes and forms, no doubt. And you look at those around Sayyid al-Shuhada, they recognized the importance of dua on the eve of Ashura. They recognized how many a times when they would speak to the Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, they would feel a sense of serenity and tranquility. Salam Allahi alayka ya Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas ibn Amir al muminin What can I say about this man? Sometimes we forget his dua. You ask me which dua? I say to you, Abu al-Fadl, this brave, loyal, altruistic brother of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, the son of Ali, this brave warrior who Sayyidatun Nisa Fatima was not able to meet, but was shedding tears for on the plains of Karbala. His heart would beat in the love of Allah and the service of Hussein. But I ask you to wonder and ponder. When can a human being converse to Allah when they are in so much pain physically? Only if you are so much in love with Him, Subhanahu wa Taala. Only if you are a true servant of Him, Jalla wa Ala. Salam Allahi alayk ya Qamar bani Hashim ya Bab al Hawaij ya Bna Amir al Mu'minin. There is a conversation that takes place between him and his soul. We all know when he feels the coldness of his water, of the water next to the Furat, the, the river bank of Al Qami, when he does not drink anything, when he says, Ya nafsu min ba'dil Hussein huni, wa ba'dahu la kunti an takuni. He speaks to himself. He communicates with himself. He tries to refine his soul. But there is one place where he supplicates to Allah. When is that? That is when they severed his left arm. Allahu Akbar. The last thing Abu al-Fadl says before he, feel, he falls onto the ground. He speaks with himself by reassuring himself to start off with. Ya nafs la takhshay min al-kuffari wa abshiri bi rahmatil jabbari O soul, do not be afraid from these disbelievers and have glad tidings of the mercy of the all-powerful with the prophet who is the master of the righteous they have by their hatred and their animosity severed my left arm then he says his line فصلهم يا رب حر النار يا الله punish them in the chastisement of hell Yes, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas speaks to his beloved in his last moments. And then he speaks to Aba Abdullah al Hussein also. This last wada, if anybody has a stone of a heart, 
he would cry for Abu al-Fadl. He would cry for the love and the affinity he had with his brother Sayyid al-Shuhada. Servitude all his life. And he wanted to bid farewell to him in his last moments. That's why he could not see who was next to him. That's why he would beg and say, Oh man, oh man, do not take my life away. I wish to see my brother Hussein for the final time. Ya Aba Abdullah, this heart of yours, how much pain and suffering it had to see. It had to see the brutal way in which Aun and Muhammad was torn into pieces. How Ali and Al-Akbar's head was split into two. How the body of Qasim was struck in so many places. How you had to pick up the head of Abu Fadl with an arrow on his left eyes. How you had to speak to him in his final moments. How you had to bear the pain of not carrying his body back to the tent. How you had to communicate and tell the women that Abbas is no longer there. That Abbas is now left this world. One narration says, that Sayyid Shuhada, his back knelt, comes back to the tent. The, the children are crying, Uncle Abbas, where is he? Sayyid Zainab, Umm Kulthum, the women of Ali Muhammad, looking, he has not brought back the son of Ali. Where is our Abbas? Where is our protector? When the pole of his tent is removed and the tent collapses, it is as if the world shakes. It is as if the heavens cry. It is as if every single creation of Allah cries out, Abbas is gone. He is no longer here. Ala la'natullahi ala al-qawm al-zalimin. Wa sayya'lamu al-lazheena zalamu ayya munqalab yanqalibun. Wa al-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen. Wa inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Raise your hands. Let's pray to Allah. Dua after Majalis, my dear sisters and brothers, is powerful. It's tremendous because you and I are remembering the Ahl al-Bayt. You and I are remembering Masa'ib of Ali Muhammad. These make the heart tender. These make the heart soft. If there are any tears, they help with the supplications being answered. نَسْأَلُكَ اللَّهُمَّ وَنَدْعُوكَ بِاسْمِكَ الْعَظِيمِ الْأَعْظَمِ الْعَزِّ الْأَجَلِّ الْأَكْرَمِ إِلَاهِ بفاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها يا الله تقبل منا هذا القليل فرج عنا وعن أهلنا فرجا عاجلا قريبا يا أرحم الراحمين we beseech you oh Allah in these moments that we are indeed in our homes we are listening to the majalis of Ali Muhammad we are remembering the aza of Ali Muhammad we are recalling the musibah of Ali Muhammad we are learning from the ulum of Ali Muhammad يا الله don't deprive us from the visitation of the shrines of Ali Muhammad. Ya Allah, make us gather back in our centers and our mosques and our places of worship soon. Ya Allah, protect our communities from all the pandemic and all the hardships and difficulties. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, bless our children, bless our women, bless our youth, bless our elders, bless all our men and women with taqwa, with God consciousness, with the light in the hearts to study the Quran. Ya Allah, ajjil ifaraj waliyika. صاحب العصر والزمان عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف يا الله make us of his devout and sincere followers وأخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد المصطفى وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين